two years ago, um, I've obviously, you know, my child had been diagnosed since he was 19 months old. And at the point of nine years old, uh, almost nine years old, um, and I actually remember seeing you guys. <laughs> I, um, we were uh, at a crossroads with him. Autism. Sorry, she said it and I didn't say it out loud. Um, we were at a crossroads with my son. Um, he hadn't made a lot of progress therapeutically. And I can speak to the fact that we did almost everything with my children because I have two children with autism. And my daughter, who's older, has done phenomenally well. My son never did. But two years ago, this time two years ago, uh, we were in a very, really bad place with him. He was aggressively violent, attacking us daily. I had bruises and scratches all over my arms. And so my nine-year-old was gonna have to be placed not only out of home, but probably out of state because his behaviors were so extreme. And I was getting ready, I'm an attorney, so I was getting ready to, for the legal fight that it would take for that to happen and not wanting to do it. My son was very connected to me, very closely connected to me that his existence and reality meant that he needed to be near me at all times. And actually if I left him to go to the bathroom is when he would have the biggest rages. I couldn't even leave his side. And my family was falling apart because of it. And I met, uh, well, I knew, but I further uh, talked to a family that many of you guys know as well who have a son with autism, who they convinced me because I didn't think that this was gonna happen. I had heard stories of children having stem cells and treatment with autism and you know that there was no, no changes or that it was just bogus and it wasn't true. Why would it help autism? But I was at such a crossroads that I didn't see any other reality for my son because I knew that at nine years old, if he left me, the only person that he felt connected to in reality um, to go live somewhere else, he would probably decompensate even more. I mean, there was just gonna be a spiral, but I had no other options. My daughter was now in danger. And then after we all even made the decision to do it, I also found out that I was surprisingly, I mean, not surprisingly, but not planning, I was pregnant with my third child. So then further danger to this new infant because I was being attacked all the time and so was my husband. So trying to keep the story short, we ended up doing the stem cell treatment. We had so much, so much backlash because in the San Diego area, I don't know how, at the same time there were a couple families that were gonna attempt it, but no one actually had done it in San Diego with a child with autism. But luckily I got a lot of support when people heard I have no other option like he is going to be out of state there will be no other fan like it, it was just we were so dire the aggression was daily and constant I mean I have videos of how bad it got so we took him and flying with him was also huh, a scary thought <laughs> I mean and he attacked us on the flight. We tried every medication. I mean, he, this is the other thing that I want to tell you. Not only have we tried every autism theory, every behavioral intervention, and I know behavioral interventions very well, um, and how to execute them. We tried every medication, Risperidone, Resperol. I mean, everything, Keppra, anti-seizure meds. We balanced every single thing for him to sleep. He didn't sleep either. So we tried everything and nothing worked. And so we were like, there's just nothing left. And so we went, and the flight was horrible. We gave him, I mean, the big, strongest drugs for sleep and practically tranquilizing him. And at the point, he would have had to be sedated and, you know, under physician care if we medicated him as strongly as we really needed to for him to fly. It was a horrible flight. It was horrible. Um, and you guys might have heard his little turtle that he had to keep, have sing just to even be happy. Um, but, but see, here's the saddest thing is for me was that I just wanted my son to be happy. My son was miserable. He was not happy and I didn't know why and no test could tell me why he wasn't miserable, why he was either in some kind of pain, but he was angry. You could see the anger on his face all the time. I just wanted my son to smile. I mean, I had so little expectation. I just wanted happiness back in my life. So we went and we did the spinals and uh, IV as well. And, um, you know, the flight back was just as horrible. 
it was worse actually. I think the stem cells were doing something and it was very uncomfortable for him. I think he was having really, really bad headaches. And at first I will admit to you, I thought, what did I do? Because it got worse. His behaviors escalated to an even higher level for the next four and a half weeks. And I thought, good God, what did I do? Like, this is not the good choice, apparently. But I had heard from patients who had gone before that you have really bad headaches sometimes when you do the spinals and they can last for a while and then your body is changing. And I thought to myself, you know, he's probably having some change. He doesn't even know what's going on. And then we hit the sixth week after he had gotten his first infusion. And all of a sudden he was starting to get happy and his behaviors got better. And my son had a full therapeutic team in our house because we needed that. And within the next few months, it was better and better and better behaviorally until even the people in his home who were like research-driven, data-driven, behavioral therapy, everybody who worked with him, they all said it had to be the stem cells. They all said it because they're like, we've tried everything for years. You've done everything for years. Nothing has been so dramatic in his life. He literally was happy. He had, another thing is a lot of immune and bowel issues. He was having regular bowel movements. He, um, you know, basically was no longer impacted, which you hear a lot of kids. No more impaction. Don't even have to worry about impaction anymore. Um, and that was painful. He sleeps at night. Um, he doesn't attack us anymore. And for me, one of the biggest things was I was pregnant and got, you know, bigger and bigger. And then I finally had my baby and I was wondering, you know, the safety of this baby. He's good with the baby. Um, he doesn't have to be placed and out of home anymore. And the really cool thing is he's happy. He's happy all the time. And his cognitive ability, he's learning things, he's understanding things. Everybody just saw this rocketing understanding. He understands so much. He doesn't have any new language and you know he's only gone once. And really it's more the flight that I'm afraid of to take him back, not that I would love to take him again because I would, but it's the flying that scares me. Um, it was traumatic. Um, I have my happy son back and really that's all I wanted was just happiness back in my life and I have it back and you know everything else was bonus so you know the fact that he is peaceful and calm and my baby can be around him and my family can be one and he's 11. <laughs> I mean you should have the minimum of that with an 11 year old right so I want to thank you guys because if this was not an option, I don't even know what my life would be like right now. So thank you.